Goop and Colts have more in common than you may think. It almost seems absurd to compare a $250 million celebrity beauty company to a cult, but when you actually get into how Goop has become so successful and how Gwyneth Paltrow leads it, there are actually some striking similarities. And again, just because she's an amazing, talented actress doesn't mean that we should be buying her depression stickers or purchasing her $10,000 items. <laughs> Goop started because of a newsletter from Gwyneth Paltrow that was shared with friends and family, and it eventually became this blog speaking about alternative wellness and lifestyle things. And then it's gained this cult following. They've launched some very interesting items, such as candles, uh, such as second version candles, and even a series on Netflix, which documents some of these unorthodox practices. And speaking of unorthodox practices, a lot of people and a lot of publications have said that Goop has a cult-like following people trying these wellness elixirs, paying into these expensive retreats. And don't get me wrong, I love Gwyneth Paltrow. I would absolutely worship her acting skills, her talent, and her beauty, but not her sunscreen application, nor would I take specific advice for her or follow her blindly. And that actually gets into cults. What makes a cult? What is a cult? And what are some of the trademark distinctions between a cult and a movement or a religion? The word cult is usually defined in terms of religion as something being unorthodox. But as I am not your target demographic so eloquently said on YouTube, that definition is a little bit problematic because what may be unorthodox for one person in their religion is completely normal for someone else's. Another definition of a cult is a group or a movement tied together by a shared commitment to a charismatic leader or ideology. There's a belief system that has all of the answers to life's questions and offers a special solution to be gained only by following the leader's rules. It requires a high level of commitment from at least some of the members. And quoting a professor of the California State University of Chico, the reality is that there's just dozens and dozens and hundreds, if not thousands of these cult groups around our country and everywhere else in the world. Sometimes they're dangerous and sometimes they're not, but they definitely flourish. So with this definition of cult that is outside of religion, it's a little bit more broad, right? It's people following a movement that normally has interesting rules or some things that the majority of people would consider unorthodox, but it has this promise of prosperity or it has these secrets of life, of health, of wellness, or of enlightenment that only followers would know. And again, it's usually led by a very charismatic, or shall we say, narcissistic leader. I Am Your Target Demographic also brought up a great point in his video that cults can be dangerous in a myriad of ways, and not all of them are, but some of them are. And while that usually relates to someone being cut off from friends and family, it could also be financial. See, a lot of cults or a lot of these movements force members to pay in. There have been some cults that have been documented asking people to sell their houses, and the idea is, I don't need a house, my home is this cult community, so I'm going to sell all of my assets and give them to the leader to be a part of this. As many people know, there was also Jonestown, where people literally got up and left their homes to go to South America, where they did end up drinking the Kool-Aid and therefore committing mass <laughs> which we're not going to verbalize on this channel because we don't want to get demonetized. Now, drinking Kool-Aid that is laced with cyanide is very different than purchasing and consuming some of Goop's wellness elixirs. Or is it? You see, pseudoscience runs rapid in cults, and who am I to say what is or isn't valid for another person, right? In medicine, we know that the placebo effect exists. Basically, it's this idea of if a doctor gives you a pill and tells you that it'll cure your headache or your disease, if you believe that enough, your body can actually make that happen. And that is why in very rigorous scientific studies, there is something called the double-blind placebo-controlled study, which actually takes a lot of those factors out so that the person in the study doesn't know if they're getting the actual medication or just a magical wellness elixir. But pseudoscience does run rampant in cults. You see, especially when cults have this charismatic leader and this community of recruiters that try to get others in, they spread these narratives or rituals of consuming certain things acting in certain ways, abstaining from certain things, whether they are food or actions, etc., as well as rejecting alternative thought. Now, when we think of pseudoscience, it's often exactly the same. It's this idea of following a leader or an idea, using certain things, not using other things, not based on evidence that is presented, but based on some sort of other ideology or a following that rejects what might be true. And that's the difference between science and pseudoscience. Science is defined as the study and structure based on observation or experience and in some ways people can call it the pursuit of truth, right? And if something can't be proven, it 
therefore isn't scientific because you cannot test it. And in science, it's actually celebrated to be proven wrong because that means that we are growing as a collective and we have this information that is evidence-based. Whereas pseudoscience believes certain things and its mind won't be changed. There is nothing that can be shown or proven that would make them think otherwise of what their current belief system is. Pseudoscience focuses on furthering some sort of ideological agenda, and it's usually to the benefit of the person who's putting it in place. And if that is a specific leader, that can be very problematic. And again, this is why cults are normally tied to religion, because sometimes a person can act as a religious deity and start exploiting those who believe in them. For example, making people do certain things, act in certain ways. Now, there are different extents to which a person or a group can push a pseudoscientific agenda, right? There's one that is hard hitting, it's drink the Kool-Aid, it is follow my lead, it is, you know, abstain from food. But when is that harmful for those members of the community versus when is it an educated and informed choice that they can choose to follow or leave at any time? And fasting can be a very important part of religion. Look at Catholicism, in which someone might abstain from eating a certain food for 40 days for Lent. Or look at Islam, where someone who is Muslim might choose to fast during Ramadan. These religions are not cults, but religions. And they do have exceptions where if someone has a specific medical condition, they are allowed to continue consuming X, Y, Z. And if they so choose to, they are able to criticize or to leave that religion as a whole if they wanted to. Whereas with cults, they're almost locked in. A lot of times they're isolated from friends or family or told not to speak to friends or family who have different religious or ideological beliefs. And that is part of what makes a cult so dangerous is because it cuts its members off from the rest of society and it doesn't allow that free choice, free will, and free thinking. That's also why specific brands such as Amway or certain MLM companies are also very dangerous, because although not religious by nature, they are capitalism, they are corporate, but a lot of MLMs encourage their followers to stop talking to friends and family who don't purchase from them or support them financially, which gets into very dangerous, murky water. Now, how is this pseudoscience or fasting or cutting friends and family off related to Gwyneth Paltrow's goop? Well, to my knowledge, Goop has never promoted cutting yourself off from friends or family based on religious or ideological beliefs. But if you take a look at the Goop website, there have been a lot of articles on there promoting specific wellness elixirs, saying that you must drink this or consume this or don't consume that in order to be pure, in order to be toxin free, in order to have health and wellness and vitality. And if you read something on Goop's website that says eating these magical microgreens and this magic powder that they sell and completely avoiding carbohydrates and pizza, you will have better digestion, you will sleep better, you will be fertile, you'll be able to have children, you'll cure your insomnia. Heck, those sound like really good claims, and you can see where someone may get sucked into that. Goop has also been shown to push a pseudoscientific narrative. A lot of things that they have said have either come under fire from actual experts or they've refused to take them down unless they've actually been sued. Now, I think that there was, what, a $145,000 lawsuit in which they were forced to take things down, but what is a $145,000 lawsuit when those types of articles are getting Goop a valuation of $2.5 million as a whole as a company? A lot of the pseudoscientific narrative that Goop pushes rejects the actual science and evidence. For example, claiming that things are better because they are paraben-free or pure because they don't have specific actives. Goop also follows the EWG, who has been accused of fear-mongering, spreading pseudoscientific information just to get people to buy said products or to follow a certain narrative that they believe in. And the EWG, the Environmental Working Group, there aren't actually any dermatologists, toxicologists, or chemists who work there. A lot of them are marketers, and again, they're pushing a specific agenda, saying that there is a dirty dozen without taking into account the nuance that exists in beauty, in products, and in the entire world around us. And just the way pseudoscience operates, they're kind of closing their eyes to the actual facts and the evidence. Grapes have parabens, pears have formaldehyde, but the dose makes the poison. Remember, even water can be poisonous if someone drinks enough of it and it dilutes their electrolytes. And a lot of these publications, whether it be Goop or the EWG, they reject this scientific knowledge and they focus on this one narrative, which is avoid these dirty things, buy ours instead. Now again, is that capitalism or is that cult-like? I suppose it depends on how people are told to follow that and how people interact with the group, which kind of gets us into Goop's Netflix show. Goop's Netflix show documents Gwyneth Paltrow and many other members of the Goop team undergoing untraditional therapies, such as exorcisms, such as vaginal steaming, and such as things that, again, experts have warned against or said has no merit and no backing. 
And just because something isn't proven by science doesn't mean it's real. Again, there can be things that we just haven't yet found ways to prove. But if something has been actively disproven scientifically, or if something has been shown to harm human health, is it dangerous for this to be promoted by a celebrity that many people idolize and adore? And as mentioned, cults not only go through unorthodox rituals, but it's usually at the guidance of the leader. And the whole thing about a cult is that there is this secrecy, this secret to life and health and happiness that only those in that group understand and those outside don't have access to. And what's interesting that most people don't realize is that Goop also has retreats. What is a retreat, you ask? Well, it's where people pay money to go to a specific getaway, again, a secret club where people on the outside don't have access, but people on the inside are given information, ideas, seminars, which could be helpful. Or in Goop's case, they had someone who would wave their hands magically and with their psychic ability, talk about one of the attendees' fertility, or at least that was quoted by a reporter who went. This person, Caroline Miss, who claimed to be a medical intuitive, literally went to someone and said, your fear of being hmm comes from your misaligned second chakra. I'm sorry, but I think no. And not to mention, these wellness summits can cost $1,000 a day. That entire thing will set you back $4,500 if you want to go. And this begs the question, what is the difference between a seminar, a weekend getaway, a workshop that's really helpful, and a pseudoscientific cult-like gathering where people have the potential of being harmed? That's a line that I can't fully distinguish and I don't fully know. But what is evident for those of us who have not attended one of those seminars or gone to those $4,500 wellness retreats is that Goop does push a pseudoscientific narrative and a lot of that is based off of capitalism and selling their products. For example, their depression stickers. They have NASA technology, and if you put them on for $60 for a pack of stickers on your arm, they will help with depression. Well, geez, for someone who is suffering from chronic depression and who is on SSRIs and seeing a psychiatrist, that promise for $60 for some stickers sounds amazing. But at the least, it's a funny decoration. But at the worst, it's giving someone false promise and stealing their money. And again, Goop has come under fire, and I believe they've had those taken down for multiple reasons. There are other things about grounding that Goop pushes on their blog, where if you walk barefoot in the grass, it shall cure your insomnia. And geez, walking barefoot in the grass and swallowing this wellness elixir, that sounds great as a cure for insomnia. But the truth is that that is not how insomnia works. And yeah, Yes, go walk barefoot all you want. I'm sure it's very relaxing, very soothing. Yes, I'm sure that someone could personally find that healing, but is it going to align you and solve your fertility issues? I think not. And the fact that Goop pushes this and asks their readers or their followers to partake in these rituals in a cult-like manner could be very damaging for those who are gullible or for those who are struggling with chronic illness or disease. A more extreme example is John Travolta and Scientology and how his son, who had autism and seizures, actually died. Now, I am not here to say whether or not Scientology is a religion or a cult. It's not something we're getting into today. But what is documented is John Travolta, who has spoken about this experience and his son. Again, his son had autism. He had seizures. And John Travolta was a member of the Church of Scientology. Now, the church specifically said, do not take medications. And some of those medications could have been life-changing or even life-saving for John Travolta's son. His 16-year-old son, Jet, would have these violent seizures. And without medication, to treat them, he had a grand mal seizure and passed away. Many people have spoken up on Jet's behalf and on behalf of other people who struggle with autism. And even John Travolta more recently seems to have distanced himself from the Church of Scientology. And this idea of not taking medicines for a religious belief put this other person, Jet, in harm's way, which ended up not treating a condition that could have prevented his premature death. Even specific blogs on goop.com promote not using certain medicines and going for wellness elixirs instead. And for those who actually need specific medications, it's very dangerous to have this sort of ideology that has no nuance. And again, this pseudoscientific ideology that says, that is dirty, this is clean, you must follow these rules, you must follow this way, follow the leader, and do as we say. I do want to make it clear that Gwyneth Paltrow herself does not stand as this deity. She does not make those sort of claims. And again, beautiful person, wonderful actress, amazing human, and I'm sure we'd get along if we ever had the chance to meet. But does that mean that people aren't following this goop cult in an unhealthy way? Or that people aren't idolizing her and what she says and does, especially in this Netflix documentary and in the way she applies her sunscreen? Absolutely not. 
And it's because of this, as well as many other details, that continue to point to this consumerism cult. Even the clean beauty movement has no definition. We speak about it on this channel all the time. But other experts have even said, clean beauty means nothing. There's no regulation around it. So why is Goop and the EWG sitting here pointing to things that they say are bad or dirty when science and actual data says otherwise? In addition, a lot of the things that Goop says is clean or that is approved by them that you can actually shop on their website are actually contain the exact same ingredients that they say are toxic or unhealthy. You can see this numerous times, especially in a sunscreen, that they say these sunscreens are toxic and bad and buy from us, not over there. But then if you go down the list of things that they have approved to buy, some of the ingredients that they say are harmful are actually in those sunscreens, which really points to not only this consumerism, but this rhetoric of just believe us, don't do the research, follow us, we know the way. And if you're in our special club and go to our wellness retreats, we will give give you the secrets to happiness, to health, to fertility, to not having insomnia and to life, as opposed to actually giving people the nuance, the actual facts, and helping them get the treatments that they might actually need. But if you have insomnia, Goop has an article for that. Again, just go buy one of their kits for $29.99 up to $199.99. But as you can see, for someone who's struggling with insomnia, what's 200 bucks if it's gonna cure that, right? Another example of a cult that exploited their members both financially and sexually is NXIVM, which surprisingly also started in Hollywood. It's got like 17,000 members. They had these self-improvement workshops, these business circles in Hollywood, and the leader, Keith, actually exploited many members and told them to do certain things. Some of them were <laughs> in nature, and others were don't eat more than 500 calories a day forcing members into starvation, into altered mindsets, and therefore giving more money to his narrative, as well as jeopardizing their own health, safety, and mental health. Two members who are sisters, Sarah and Claire Bronfman, actually put over $145 million of assets into Keith's cult, simply based on the premise of, this is our home now, this is what is safe, this is what Keith told us to do. And that ideology can not only be harmful, but it can be deadly. Having to pay into something to belong and have the secrets and the access to health and wellness, these elixirs and life, is very problematic. And again, in these closed communities, there's usually no nuance. It's follow me, do as I say. And many times people are exploited for different reasons and that often includes financially. Now look at some of the other things that Goop has on the website. A vagina candle, yeah. Cool, you know, feminism, all for it. But this jade egg, this has actually been proven to have negative health effects, to be dangerous, especially because it could contribute to infection and therefore shock in a woman's body. These jade eggs are porous, they can hold on to bacteria. And OBGYNs have specifically come out and said, Goop, this is not only not true, but it is harmful, it is dangerous, and nobody should be spending $65, $85 on these jade eggs. And as mentioned, Goop was hit with a $145,000 marketing fine for spreading false information. But for a $250 million company who's still selling these things and has a cult following who buys them, do you think it's a problem? And a $10,000 golden mm hmm that definitely seems a bit more elitist to me. And where do we draw the lines of sexual liberation and luxury feminine products versus a cult following that excludes those who don't pay into it or who don't drink the magic elixir? Outside of the jade eggs, there's the vaginal steaming. There's again the stickers that NASA has come out and said, we don't endorse this, don't use our name to sell these things. There's the wellness elixirs. There are these mysterious retreats. And when you look at how Goop has gotten so successful, it is quite curious that some of the same tactics that are used in actual cults to manipulate groups of people are being used by Goop and by other companies to manipulate customers. And where does that line get drawn? There's the doomsday narrative, the fear that the Mayan calendar is going to end in 2012 and people committing <laughs> to achieve enlightenment. And then there's Goop saying that you need to walk barefoot and pay all this money to their things in order to achieve enlightenment. There are cults saying that you must consume certain things and abstain from certain things as the leader says. And there's Goop with blog posts that reject science and create a pseudoscientific narrative saying similar things. You have to buy this and eat this in order to be your best self and to be just like Gwyneth. 
And Gwyneth Paltrow, a beautiful, charismatic, gorgeous, and talented person that people look up to, is not the exact same as one of these narcissistic cult leaders who are actually forcing people to follow them and exploiting people both <laughs> and financially. But as you can see, the Goop conglomerate does have a lot of things in common with these cults. It almost begs the question, how do people get sucked into a cult anyways? Most people don't realize that it's happening. Nobody literally goes and says, I want to join a cult. I want to do that they start to get sucked in. That's why cults have recruiters. They hook someone in. They start sharing these new ideologies, the promise of health and prosperity. They start taking money. They deprive people of their financial freedom. And then they start to cut them off from friends and family, which is where that becomes extremely, extremely dangerous. And that's where someone who is maybe malnourished, following this cult, doesn't have money, has no contact with friends and family who believe otherwise, that is where they no longer have this free choice or this free will. They are being controlled by this cult leader or this group. Now with Goop, they're not cutting you off from friends or family. Gwyneth Paltrow isn't sitting here and forcing people to do X, Y, Z. But when Goop promotes these low calorie diets, when Goop promotes purchasing these items or these wellness elixirs to be healthy and your happiest self, and then has these seminars, these secret closed door $4,500 getaways, where people are literally told your fear of being assaulted literally comes from a chakra misalignment and we can solve it here. Come with us, do this exorcism here, have this vaginal steaming. At the very least, it's a waste of money and something to laugh at. But when it gets deeper into people who are gullible or financially vulnerable, it becomes exploitative and it stops people from getting the information or the nuance that they might actually need. I am not calling Gwyneth Paltrow a cult leader. I am not calling Goop a cult or an unorthodox religion. What I am saying is that there are some striking similarities. And I do wonder if that cult following contributes to how Goop has been able to build a $250 million beauty empire. But I am not the expert in cults, which is why I want to know what you think. Is Goop's wellness elixir the 21st century capitalist Kool-Aid? And is this one of the cults that just isn't as dangerous? Or is this just a company that should be able to do and say whatever they want and exercise their freedom of speech without disclosing nuance or the potential to harm others? Let me know in the comments or share this with someone who might need to hear it. Always remember to be a critic, be a skeptic, stay hydrated both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys. Bye.